Morning X. First of all, I want to thank your leadership for the opportunity to uh, share God's word with you. And of course, today uh, being the uh, third day of Chinese New Year, allow me to take this opportunity to greet all of you a blessed Chinese New Year, especially in the year of the Ox. And I just want to give you a little bit background of uh, myself, because some of you may not know uh, who I am. Well, um, in 1985, together with uh, 13 QBC members, uh, we were sent off uh, to start a new church in the West. And uh, as a result of which, uh, X Baptist Church was born. And uh, I, if I recall correctly, uh, uh, it was in uh, 2003, uh, that is where the year I left X Baptist Church uh, to return to Queenstown Baptist Church to begin my uh, full-time ministry as a pastor. And so from um, 1985 to uh, 2003, that will, will be 18 years. And now uh, in this year, 2021, uh, I'm so glad that I can be back uh, to ex Baptist Church to preach. I, again, I want to thank uh, your leadership for this invitation. And I noted that it's already another 18 years uh, of uh, my absence uh, from uh, X, but I'm so glad that I'm able to uh, connect uh, with your church. And I really sincerely pray that uh, there will be such more opportunity. Now being the Chinese New Year's uh, period, I was asked to give a message that is uh, linked to Chinese New Year. So I decided uh, to uh, give a message that had to do with uh, uh, godly wisdom. And so uh, before I begin to share with you the God's word, uh, allow me to uh, share screen. As you can see from the screen, uh, I entitled my sermon, uh, God's Home Power of Wisdom for the Auspicious Year. And my scripture text is taken from uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 to 13. And so without further ado, let's uh, refer to the text and I have it on the screen for you guys and uh, we can uh, just uh, uh, follow with me as I read the text. Uh, with you. Uh, get wisdom and insight. Uh, do not forget or ignore what I say. Do not abandon wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will keep you safe. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Whatever else you get, get insight. Love wisdom and she will make you great. Embrace her and she will bring you honor. She will be your crowning glory. Listen to me, my child. Take seriously what I am telling you and you will live a long life. I have taught you wisdom and the right way to live. Nothing will stand in your way if you walk wisely and you will not stumble when you run. Always remember what you have learned. Your education is your life. Got it well. Well, church, you notice that in verse 5, the phrase get wisdom is actually in an imperative verb form. Get wisdom, if we can interpret it and translate it correctly, it's actually an active command and it's not a suggestion. It is a command by Solomon, who is the writer of the Proverbs. You see, our world is full of knowledge. Ever since the explosion of IT, but said to say it's lacking in wisdom, divine wisdom, that's what I mean. You see, Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, he tells us that God chose the foolish thing of the world to shame the worldly wise. He chose the weak thing to shame the worldly strong. This is the wisdom of God, but the world never comprehends it. What we need today is not more knowledge, 
In fact, we have we have overload of it. What we really need is divine wisdom, and that comes from the application of God's word in our life. Well, you may ask me what are the differences between wisdoms and knowledge. Well, here I have some uh, for you to help you to appreciate what wisdom is all about. Knowledge is knowing a fact or information only. Wisdom is knowing what to do with the fact or information. Knowledge becomes wisdom only after it has been put to practical use. Wisdom is the right use of knowledge. You can buy knowledge, but wisdom is a gift from God. It is generally agreed that few are wise, but many are otherwise. So you see, X, knowledge alone is not enough for the new year, especially a year that is being plagued by COVID-19 pandemic. Wisdom that is from God is that special ability to transform knowledge into effective application for our lives. Well, years can make you and I old, but not necessarily wise. So divine wisdom, according to the scripture, is a gift from God. And all we have to do is to ask God for it. In fact, the Bible commanded us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5, to get wisdom from the Lord. And his wisdom is found in his word alone. Shall we say amen to that? And so this morning, by God's divine appointment, I want to present to you five home pao, being Chinese New Year, of divine wisdom for the year of the ox. As I present these five home pao of wisdom to you, I pray that one of these may speak to you personally for the new year that we are in today. So with that, let us come before the Lord, the only wise God, and pray that he will grant us divine wisdom and insight to apply his word into our life for the new year. Let's pray. Jesus, you are the only wise God. Together, we come to your holy presence and ask that you will speak to us personally. Grant to us ears to hear and hearts to obey. And more importantly, Lord, a spirit of wisdom to apply your words into our lives. Lord, you say that we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Indeed, your word is truth. By your great name, we loosen all spiritual bondages, hindrances that are within us from receiving your holy word. We ask that the word of God will saturate our hearts and it will penetrate into the depth of our beings. We claim the promise in Isaiah 55, that when the word of God is being set forth, it will not return to you, O Lord, empty and void. But Lord, it will accomplish what he has been sent for, and that is to transform lives. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. There were once three boys, they were boasting about the home power that they received from their parents. And of course, the first boy announced proudly to the, to, the, to, to the other two boys. He said, this year, my father gave us children a $200 home power each. And I have five brothers and sisters at home. How about that? The second boy laughed. Yours is nothing. My father gave us $500 home power each, and I have 10 siblings at home. Whoa! The third boy, upon hearing the two boys boast, lowers his head and with tears in his eyes, says, my father gave me a 10,000 note this year. The two boys were dumbfounded and asked, then what are you crying for? The boy replied, $10,000 in rupiah la. Church, humor aside, I just want to emphasize to you this morning that the home power of divine wisdom that our Heavenly Father give to each of us is priceless. So pay careful attention and let the Holy Spirit impress upon your heart which home power of wisdom is meant 
for you because I believe there is something in God's compound of wisdom for each one of us today. Let's begin with the first compound of divine wisdom. And that is a path without a Goliath leads to nowhere. And this is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. I just want to say that the biblical statement that is linked to this wisdom statement is this. You will never discover your promised land without overcoming obstacles to the wilderness of life. Now I have a question for you guys. Those of you who have not encountered any obstacles, challenges or difficulties in 2020, please raise your hands. Of course, I cannot see your hands because this is a virtual worship, but I'm sure nobody has raised his or her hand if we are really honest with ourselves. We all have our obstacles and problems in life. For some, 2020 may have been a great year of obstacles and challenges. As a matter of fact, many of us have been affected in one way or the other by the COVID pandemic crisis. As for me, not only 2020, even 2019 has been a period of great transition and adjustments. You see, after I stepped down as a pastor in QBC in 2018, I was compelled, I used the word compelled, to adjust from being a pastor to being a lay person in the church. From having a regular income to not having one and all. From the position of leading in church ministries that I used to, to not having a ministry to lead at all. So I want you to know that my last two years were indeed a difficult time of transition and adjustment for me. To be frank with you, personally, I felt lost, insecure, and unproductive as I navigated through the obstacles of transition and adjustments in life. So church, like it or not, obstacles, challenges like what I just experienced will come our ways. But more importantly, we must put them in the right perspective. And this is to say in God's perspectives. Now scripture tells us in James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 that we all have our trials and challenges in life and this uh, come our way to mature our faith in Christ. James 1 2 to 4 says, consider it a sure joy my friends when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure your faith life is forced into the open and show its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it uh, do its works so that you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. And of course, this is taken from message. So I say to you, a path without obstacle doesn't lead anywhere. Anywhere rather. The truth is this, you and I will never find our promised land without walking our way through the wilderness, which again, this refers to the challenges in life. And that was what really happened to the Israelites, isn't it? In Exodus, before they could reach their promised land, they have to go through obstacles in the wilderness. You see, you and I are not alone in encountering obstacles in life. Godly men and women in the Old Testament and New Testament face obstacles in their life as well. Examples, Abraham had his uncharted territories to possess. Jacob has his angry Esau to contend with talking about difficult relationship. Joseph had his pastor to reconcile with. He was being abandoned by his brothers and left to die. David had to fight his Goliath. Hannah was despised because of her inability to give birth. You know, in those days, if you are without a child, it's really a humiliation, an embarrassment. Mary was pregnant before marriage. Our Lord Jesus had his cross to bear. And Paul had his thorns in his flesh to keep him humble 
all the time. So when you look at the lives of these people, they all have three things in common. First, I want you to notice that they are, or they were ordinary people like you and I. Secondly, they had their obstacles and challenges, challenges in life like you and I. And more importantly, we noted that they have overcame their obstacles and found their purposes and fulfillment in life. So friends, some of us this morning may encounter a Goliath in this year 2021. In fact, some of us may be facing a Goliath as I speak right now. Do you know that the name Goliath in Hebrew means obstacles? The Goliath in David's time was not an ordinary obstacle. He was a giant, a mighty threat to the Israel army and David. You see, Goliath was blocking the path of the army of Israel such that the Israelite army cannot move forward or backward and they got stuck in a nowhere situation. Some of you might find yourself being stuck in a situation because of the obstacles in life, whether it is tangible or intangible. In Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, Goliath was in fact sent by Satan to obstruct David's destiny as the next king of Israel. But God, in his wisdom, used Goliath instead to prepare David for the greater work ahead. Let's examine how David overcome his Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And hopefully, it will help you to overcome yours as well. And so in a nutshell, David overcame his Goliath by being faithful in the little things. And the little things were actually preparing him for the greater things. And you can find the references uh, in the slide that is before you. Secondly, he recalled God's faithfulness to him, his past faithfulness to him. And that gave him tremendous, tremendous courage and uh, confidence in the Lord. He saw Goliath in God's perspective. Rather than uh, looking at Goliath, he was able to look up and see Goliath in God's perspective. And that is a grasshopper to the eyes of faith. He confronted Goliath in the confidence of the Lord. And then finally, he saw his Goliath fell in verse 49. And so people, if you face an obstacle today and you realize the obstacle seems insurmountable, it simply means that you might be on the right path according to God's will, as David did. And so my word to you is don't give up. If God allows these obstacles into your life, it is for a divine reason. And that is to build up your character and to prepare you for better things to come. You see, before Joseph can become the prime minister of Egypt, God allowed Joseph to go through a series of trials and difficulties to prepare him for the greater work. You need to hold on and don't give up. Remain faithful and wait for God to act on your behalf. You will never find your promised land without walking your way through the obstacles in the wilderness. Can I hear the word amen? I remember there's this song that most of you are familiar with. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in way we cannot see. He will make a way for you. He will be your guide. Hold you closely to his side. We love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. And this is taken from Isaiah 43, 19. The second home power of divine wisdom for you today is failure doesn't mean you are a failure. And the reference is Luke 22, 61 to 62. And the biblical statement, okay, linked to this Wisdom statement is this. God is committed to shaping you through failure as much as he, he is forgiving you because of it. 
Now I want you to listen to what great and successful people have to say about failures. The only thing achieved without effort is failure. And so we know that success can only come when there is effort put in it. Many life's failures are men and women who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. So giving up is really a symptom of failures, but not giving up is really a sign of success. Falling down doesn't make you a failure, but staying down does. The fear of failure is the father of all failures. There's something to gain from just about everything, even our failures. Wisdom is learned more from failure than from success. Now, I like what Rick Warren had to say about failures, and this is what he says. God never wastes a failure in your life, and he uses it to shape you to be like his son, Jesus. How about that? And so let us now look at Luke chapter 22, 61 to 62, to learn a little bit more about encountering failures in our life. And turning the Lord looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he told him, before a cock would crow, you will deny me three times. And going outside, Peter wept bitterly. So as I will consider Peter, beside Judas Iscariot, the greatest failure of all Jesus' disciples. Early on, Peter boasted in front of everybody that he will never deny Jesus, but... He did not only did it once, but three times in a matter of minutes. And so talking about failure, I think Peter fixed the bill perfectly. Don't you agree with me? Did our Lord Jesus give up on him? No. In John 21, our Lord Jesus sought Peter out at the shore of Galilee. In fact, it was Peter who has given up on Jesus and went back to fishing instead. In this very moving scene, at the shore, Jesus lovingly restored Peter and affirmed him and commissioned him once again to shepherd his sheep. After that failure, did Peter remain defeated? No, we see Peter rise up to become a great apostle to the Jerusalem church. So dear friends, wisdom is learned more from failure than from success. Repeat after me. God can use my failure to shape me for his glory. One more time. God can use my failure to shape me for his glory. Amen to that. The third hometown of divine wisdom is when God is all you have, God is all you need. Psalms 23. And the biblical statement is this. He is not just the God I am, but the God who will provide. In Genesis chapter 22, God was testing Abraham. Well, if you turn to your Bible to that chapter, you will notice there is usually a subtitle connected or being uh, reflected in the section. In most Bible today, you will find that kind of a title uh, being uh, reflected to a particular section within the chapter of the book. Well, I do a quick uh, search. I found that NIV labeled that chapter as Abraham Tested. The King James Bible entitled it as The Sacrifice of Isaac. The New uh, American Standard puts it The Offering of Isaac. To be honest with you, I find these titles are rather misleading and superficial. You see, if you read the passage as it is, you may come to this kind of natural conclusion that God was indeed testing Abraham's faith when he asked him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. But then, if you do a more careful study of Genesis 22, this wasn't what Moses intend. Of course, we know that Moses is the writer of Genesis. Moses I believe in Genesis 22 was not talking about 
just Abraham faith, yes, or the sacrifice of Isaac, yes, but theologically speaking, Moses was trying to tell us that God is Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. You see, at the end of chapter 22, Moses himself concluded that Abraham came to know and worship God as Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. You see, when God is all you have, God is all you need. He's more than enough. He is not just the God I am, but the God who will provide. King David came to the same conclusion as Abraham did in Psalms 23. In verse 1, he declared that God was his great shepherd, therefore he was not in need. Can you imagine a king who has everything under his command at that time, and yet he declared that God was all he ever needs. This is really amazing to me. Imagine it's like the richest man, for example, you know, this Jeff Bezos, the Amazon, Amazon CEO, the richest man currently on earth. And he's like, he's saying, Jesus is my Lord. I don't want anything else. It's like that. And so in Psalm 23, King David sang and he, that God provides him with rest and refreshment in verse 2. He sang that God provide, he provided him restoration and righteousness in verse 3, protection in verse 4, sustenance in verse 5, and security and eternal home, eternal home after life in verse 6. So I said this to you again. When God is all that you have, God is all that you need. He is not just the God I am, but the God who will provide. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this song, Joho Jaira. And we used to sing this song, and it's so meaningful. And we need to sing this song again and again in our lives, at least especially for this uh, year, uh, 2021. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He gave his angel charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh's care for me. Compound of Divine Wisdom, number four. If you want to walk on water, don't ask those in the boat. And the account is taken from Matthew chapter 14, 25 to 29. And the biblical statement is this. When you ask others to do what they are not prepared to do, they will always tell you not to do it. This year, 2021, may be a year of COVID and challenges for some of you, but it can also be a year of great opportunity for you too. 2021 can be a new year to try something new, attempt something different, and do something not popular with the crowd. In Matthew chapter 14, 25 to 29, we read of Peter encountering Jesus in the middle of a lake. While he and his fellow disciple was baffling a storm that was threatening the boat. Again, let us look at the passage. Between three and six o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to the disciple walking on the water. When they saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they say and scream with fear. Jesus spoke to them at once, courage, he said, it is I, don't be afraid. Then Peter spoke up, Lord, if it's really you, order me to come out on the water to you. Come, Jesus, uh, Jesus said to him. And Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water to Jesus. Now I want you to notice the phrase, Order me to come out on the water to you. I underline for you. Peter did not say to Jesus, order me to swim to you. 
or to roll to you, but walk to you. The word order is actually in the orig original Greek means the command of a king. Peter knew that Jesus was not, was not an ordinary king. Jesus once asked his disciple, whom did men say I am? Peter declared that Jesus is the Messiah, Christ, the Son of God, the King of Kings. In other words, Peter had this divine revelation from the Holy Spirit that Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth, and therefore he has the power over nature. That was why he said, Lord, command me as the King of Kings to come to you. As we read our Bibles, we discover that there are two kinds of storms in life. The first of which is the storm of correction. This is when God disciplines you and I all our sins and disobedience. The other one is the storm of maturity. This is when God wants us to grow in faith in him. Jonah was in a storm of correction because he disobeyed and ran away from God. But in this account, Matthew 14, the 12 disciples were caught in a calm a storm of maturity because Christ wanted to build their trust and faith in him. As Peter saw this golden opportunity in the middle of this great storm, while the seas and the waves were rising against them amidst the gloom and the doom, he seized the opportunity and did the uncommon thing. He took the leap of faith. He didn't ask the people in the boat if you could walk on water. You see, the 11 disciples will surely tell him that he is crazy. You better stay in the boat. It is much safer on the inside. So ask, if you want to walk on water, don't ask those in the boat. When was the last time you exercised your great faith in the Lord? My last leap of faith was when I heard God's call to step out of Queenstown Baptist Church as a pastor in 2018. In order two things, to take care of my aged mother at that time and to serve as a volunteer in the Baptist Convention for the sake of the, the small church in the community. You see, God laid a burden in my heart. 2021, maybe a year of faith venture for some of you. A year of change, a year of encountering God afresh. You cannot stay in the boat, people, and be comfortable. For some of you, the Lord may be asking you to step out by faith and not by sight. God may be calling some of you into full-time ministry or go for a mission trip or to surrender to him in a big way or to do something really out of the ordinary for him. And so whatever that might be, it boils down to the fact that you need to walk by faith and not by sight. If you want to walk on water to encounter God afresh, don't ask those in the boat. Just step out by faith and the Lord will honor your faith in a great way. The fifth home power of divine wisdom is trust God more. And this is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6. And the biblical statement for you is this. Most Christians believe in God, but not many believe God. Dear X, there is a great difference between belief in God and believe God. The first statement refers to hate knowledge only, while the other one is a deep conviction in the heart. You see, you can believe all about God in your head, but your heart dare not trust him enough to deliver what he has promised in his word. When you face your Goliath, you need to trust God more. When you face failure, and I'm sure you will, you need to trust God more. When you are in need, I'm sure most of us will, you need to trust God more. When divine opportunity arises, will you trust God more? That is a question. For 2021, Will you say in your heart, God, I will trust you more. 
Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You see the word with all your heart. And need not on your own understanding, your mind. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. If God the Father did not spare his sons for you, how much more he will not care and provide for you? There's this beautiful hymn, Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and love with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And so, to recap, the five home powers of divine wisdom for the auspicious year. Home power number one, a path without a Goliath leads to nowhere. And the statement is this, you will never discover your destiny, your promised land without overcoming the obstacle through the wilderness of life. So do not fear obstacles or challenges. Failure doesn't mean you are a failure. You see, God is committed to shaping you through failures as much as he's forgiving you because of it. Because we are all fallen human beings. We will do make mistakes. But our God is a God that can redeem and can reshape us again and again. He's a God of second chance. On part number, five, number three, when God is all you have, God is all you need. So that whole idea, the whole understanding is keep close to God. Hold on to God. Don't let him go like Jacob who wrestled with God. He's not just the God I am, but the God God who will provide. If you want to walk on the water, don't ask those in the boat. And the statement is this, when you ask others to do what they are not prepared to do, they will always tell you not to do it. You want to encounter God afresh? You want to walk in a new and living way? Sometimes you really need to uh, walk by faith and not by sight. And of course, the fifth home power, is this, trust God more. Would you do that for 2021? Most Christians believe in God, but not many believe God. We come to a time right now, dear brother and sister in Christ, of reflection and application. After hearing the five wisdom, divine wisdom, I believe, number one, God has one for you. Maybe this, this particular one really resonates with you. And if it does, it means to you and it applies to you, I want you to claim it by faith because I believe just as in Chinese Chinese New Year, God wants to give you a home power of wisdom for the year 2021. Then I want you to share with someone for that one home power that resonates with you. The reason why I say share because it will reinforce what God has laid upon your heart. And then you can pray and thank God for it to affirm it. Then you need to ask, what is the Lord saying to you through the wisdom statement that you receive? Uh, for each of the home power of wisdom, I give you a biblical statement. And so what is the Lord saying to you? in one of these statements that is associated with your compound that you have received. And then you need to really uh, be more specific. What are you going to do about it? Because without applying God's word, there will not be transformation because God's word needs to be applied. That is the wisdom. And you need to ask God for that wisdom because you know uh, wisdom is the, uh, uh, the, the right use of knowledge, the application of, of God's word. Last but not least, then you pray and commit what you intend to do 
about the home power that God has laid upon her, the things that you want to do and pray and commit to the Lord. And so these are the five home powers for you guys. And I hope that you are blessed by it. I'm so thankful that I'm able to share and praise the Lord. And I pray that we will meet again. Thank you again. And all glory and all praise goes to the Lord. Amen. I will stop sharing right now. Bye-bye, guys. The Lord bless you.